Easter people, raise your voices as we join and stand and sing the triumphant entry of Christ the Lord is risen today. Happy Easter. Would you stand with me as we praise God together? Hymn number 302. indeed. Death has been swallowed in victory. The grave has lost its sting. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. We are alive in Christ. Glory to God. Alleluia. Say it again. Alleluia. And one more time so we know you mean it. Alleluia. Let us pray together. O oh, eternal joy of all, in this place, we are witnesses to the table that you have spread for all creation. This celebration today of Easter, it nourishes the deepest needs of our souls and it relieves our fears. It pours the healing oil of gladness in all our wounds. On this day, O oh God, we raise our alleluias, giving thanks for the truth that neither human sin nor the power of death is stronger than the love of Jesus Christ. Our souls exult in your merciful salvation today and forever. As we worship today in spirit and truth, Holy Spirit, come and rest upon us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. 
Good How wonderful it is to see everyone, even uh, those who moved moved away from us but are here today. It's good to see people again. Uh, just a couple announcements. Uh, there will be an uh, Easter egg hunt for the for the children right following this service. Uh, we'll gather just outside here on the sidewalk here on uh, Court Street uh, before we let them go over in the lawn uh, next door. And also, uh, there will be an opportunity to have uh, pictures taken uh, by Kristen Duty of New Creation Images. She'll be here to take pictures if you'd like that. Uh, that's a gift from the church. Uh, so if you would like that, please, you, you'll, you'll have the opportunity for that outside also. Uh, are there any other announcements that need to be brought to our attention? One announcement for the children. Miss Donna and Miss Christina are downstairs. If anyone would want to go downstairs, they have a movie downstairs for you in the basement, and you're welcome to go there, and they have some treats. Uh, Mr. Jim brought some special eggs for you as well. Those are downstairs. So you're welcome at any time during the service to go downstairs, these side stairs here, and into the basement or into the nursery with Miss Christina. Are there any others? Nope. Well, at this time, uh, instead of our way we usually used to do it, we would go around, shake hands, and greet one another. But if we'll just stand, give, try to give everybody a little smile and a wave and say hello and welcome everyone today. Peace of Christ, especially to those who are joining us online this morning. Everyone will give a wave. We've got several at home still worshiping with us online. Happy Easter. We pray that you're a part of this service as well, and we know that you're going to join us in your comments also. As we come into this time of uh, celebration and prayer, joys, and concerns, I have a few that I would ask for you to remember um, Donna Butcher asks that we remember her mother and her sister and their help. So let's remember Donna's mother and sister as we go into this time of prayer together. We had several mentioned this morning in our 9 o'clock service. Share those with you as well. Uh, the name of Naomi Hurley, who's battling cancer. Uh, remember Peggy Boyd's brother Wayne and his wife Debbie, who were in a car accident. Uh, remember um, the Taylor family, as well as the family of Jane, Jan Sheets, the family of Tyler Perry, Deidre Stevens, Lola Tarp, who is a friend of Barb's, and remember my uncle Ford Sparks in your prayers. Are there any other prayers that we want to share together today as we come into worship? We know that we do have several birthdays as well. Um, I'd ask Bobby to share those with us. Phone out, sorry. <laughs> the new bulletin. Anyone else? Anyone here have a birthday that you want to celebrate? Are they pointing to you, Clara? Happy birthday to you. <laughs> what, what what day is Clara's birthday? Happy birthday to you. You're 21st. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, Juwan. Yeah. Happy birthday, Dad. Uh, today is Linda Duncan's birthday. Linda out there. Hopefully she's watching. Uh, on the 6th, uh, Cole Goggins. So happy birthday, Cole. And Catherine Castle on the 8th. So happy birthday to each one of those this week. Are there any other uh, joys or concerns anyone would like to share? Oh, Teresa, Pam's sister, Teresa.
Any unspoken requests? It's a show of hands. Thank you. Uh, do we have any online requests? Uh, yes, we just have one so far. Um, Linda Pack is asking for prayers for her family and also for travel mercies for herself next week. And that's all we have. Anyone else? If we'll turn in our hymnals, please, for our prayer hymn. Number 364, Because He Lives, we'll just be singing verse 1, and you may remain seated for number 364. Be still and know that I am God. God, what a comfort it is today to come into this space of prayer, to approach the empty tomb, and to be surprised by hope. God, we come in our flesh with our wounds, and we instead look toward yours and know that they are healed and that thanks to your resurrection, O oh God, we too are healed. Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, you overcame death and opened us to the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate this day of our Lord's resurrection may by the renewing of your spirit arise from the death of sin to the life of righteousness through Jesus Christ. Oh God, give us joy in our hearts, joy that is unspeakable as we stand amazed in the presence of God today, celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also, God, joy in the life in your service and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh God, we thank you for these, our sisters and brothers, who have come today in faith to pray, to surrender. God, for those who hold deep wounds in their hearts, listen, oh God. Listen to your servants who are calling out. We pray now for these that are on our lips and in our hearts. For Teresa Vickers.
for Donna Butcher's mother and sister, for the family of Linda Pack, for Linda in her travel mercies, for all we have named today, for all who you hear in this great mystery, in this invitation of prayer. We ask, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And, O oh God, we pray not on our own power, but relying fully and solely in the name of the one who has saved us, the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. First scripture lesson today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43, and can be found in your pew Bibles on page 1081. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judah, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judah and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And as we prepare to give of our tithes and offerings, uh, there are many ways we can give at this time. Uh, we can give online uh, at mayochurch.org, or you can mail it into the church at P.O. Box 669, uh, Paintsville, Kentucky, 41240. Uh, or uh, you may give as you uh, leave the sanctuary today. Uh, if you haven't already, there are offering plates at each, each entrance. You may drop your offering there if you would like there also. So as we prepare to give of our tithes and offerings, uh, may we stand and, and give thanks to God with the doxology. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the many gifts you give, but no more than the gift of Jesus Christ. We just ask that you take our offerings and bless them and use them in a way that is pleasing to you. It's in your name we pray. on his head he knew that he would soon be dead he said did you forget me father did you they nailed him to a wooden cross soon all the world would fill his cross the Christ the King before his hallelujah Again they came, then 
y'all were going to bring down the house there for a minute. I wasn't sure what was going on. <laughs> Happy Easter, friends. What a joy it is to see your smiling eyes and your faces and together here with you in the joy of resurrection. I would invite you in honor of the gospel reading today from the gospel of Luke chapter 24 verses 1 through 12 on page 1038 in your pew Bible, in honor of this hearing today of the word of our Lord, would you stand please? Luke writes, but on the first day of the week, which was a Sunday, <laughs> at early dawn, they came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee? that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day he would rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clothes by themselves, and then he went home, amazed at what had happened. Friends, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? O risen Messiah, indeed, hallelujah. Christ is risen indeed. Glory be to you whom death could not defeat. Praise to the Savior of heaven and earth. Honor and glory are yours now and forever. Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. O oh God, open to us now these words of life that we too may live. And O oh God, may these words that you have given to me to speak today in the presence of these witnesses, be pleasing to you and you alone. For you, O oh God, are my rock and my redeemer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I want us to hear this scripture again from a different translation, the message. Eugene Peterson titles this, Looking for the Living One in a Cemetery. He says, at the crack of dawn on Sunday, the women came to the tomb carrying the burial spices they had prepared, and they found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb, so they walked in. But once inside, they couldn't find the body of the Master Jesus. They were puzzled, wondering what to make of this. And then, out of nowhere, it seemed, two men, light cascading over them, stood there. The women were awestruck and bowed down in worship. 
The men said, Why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? He's not here. He's raised up. Remember how he told you when you were still back in Galilee that he had to be raised up, that he had to be handed over to sinners, be killed on a cross, and in three days rise up. And then they remembered Jesus' words. They left the tomb and broke the news of all this to the eleven and the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, the other women with them kept telling these things to the apostles. But the apostles didn't believe a word of it. They thought they were making it all up. But Peter jumped up to his feet. He ran to the tomb. He stooped in and saw a few grave clothes. That's all. And he walked away, puzzled, shaking his head. Why do you look for the living among the dead? It seems like a weird question, doesn't it? And I wonder why Mary didn't say, we're not. We're not looking for the living among the dead. We're here looking for the dead. That's the obvious answer, right? Why are you here looking for the living among the dead? Mary would say, I was there. Were you there when they crucified my Lord, as the old hymn says? And Mary would say, yes. Yes, I was. I saw with my own eyes. I saw his dead body hanging on the cross. I saw the water from his pierced side flow down. I saw his body taken from the cross and placed into this very tomb. I know I'm in the right place. This whole time we were with them, we would have never dreamed that this is what Jesus meant, Mary must have been thinking. Truly, this was unbelievable. This first Easter morning on a Sunday morning at the crack of dawn, it starts out, friends, in darkness, in grief, and in ritual. There wasn't alleluias. There wasn't Easter lilies and, and a bulletin and hymns and songs of praise and gathering. There was quiet. There was confusion. There was ritual. Much later, it would start to sink in. These epiphanies would start to come and they would start to piece it together like the puzzle that they were feeling they were in. This piece here makes a whole picture. And this piece here, remember he said as the, as the gospel writers start to piece it together and start to build for us this puzzle and it starts to make sense. A sense of wonder. You're here today, friends, because a seed of faith has been planted in your hearts. A seed of resurrection. You're here today because you know there's something more. But you're here today with questions. Maybe you're here today with doubt. We'd be lying and fooling ourselves if we said it made sense to us completely, wouldn't we? Because what we see all around us is death. Often we come not looking either for the living among the dead. Not looking for life. I had an encounter this week with a friend who lives on the streets. He's homeless. and um, It's what he knows. And little by little I've been trying to learn his story. This week when he came in, he usually comes in for some food. He comes in to get a backpack that's given out by Encounter Missions. And uh, this week I gave him that backpack and he lingered a little bit longer. And he stopped and he said, How is it that you believe in a God that you can't see? And I knew in that moment I had an opportunity as Johnny said this morning, to roll away the stone for a brother. To help him to peek in and to see the risen Lord. It, it's not the life that he knows. It's not a life that he understands. I didn't in that moment say, uh, would, you, would you pray with me? And I didn't lead him in a sinner's prayer or down the Romans road of salvation. Instead, I invited him to ask more questions. And so he went on. Do you think there's more than one God? And we talked about that. And he said, do you think there's aliens? And we talked about that. And he said, what do you think happens after you die? And we set out for a long while answering and wondering these questions together. How do 
do you know God is real? You ask me how I know that he lives? I don't expect to say that he lives within my heart without feeling that, without being able to, to tell someone else. I can tell you, though, that by following Jesus and loving God and loving my neighbor, it's where I find purpose. I didn't, didn't have all the right answers for those questions that he was asking, but I could tell him my story. I could tell him that it awakens my very soul, that I, I feel that love of God in my heart. But I couldn't make him feel it. What I could do, all that I could do was invite him to continue to ask. To keep inviting him back and say, let's talk again. Let's talk more. You ask me how I know God is real. You ask me how I know that Jesus lives. He lives within my heart. It awakens my spirit. It's the equivalent of seeing the scars and touching Jesus' pierced hands. When I, when I look to my brother and my sister, when I look to my neighbor and I see their wounds, and in them I see Jesus, and I know something more is possible. We read in John's account with, with the disciple Thomas that Jesus appears to the disciples, and even they who walked with Jesus still had trouble believing. Seeing is not always believing. Jesus says to Thomas and he says to us, Blessed are you who have not seen God and yet believe. And so I invited this friend. I said, if you want to see Jesus, just keep coming back. Come in your doubt. Come as puzzled as Peter was, standing there, looking in the tomb, knowing it didn't make sense. Come and rehearse this old, old story and still, until the pieces start to come together and still, until you can see a bigger picture. The story begins with the obvious. Jesus is dead. His followers assume that he it remains dead. The women, they come to the tomb because this is where they saw the body placed after the crucifixion. And they come in the ritual with their spices to anoint the dead body, to show respect. But the discovery of the empty tomb, it changes their, com their perspective completely. And what it brings isn't clarity. What it brings is confusion. Now friends, God is not the author of confusion, but he invites us to ask. He invites us to wonder. It's where we come in awe of God beyond our own understanding. We cannot understand how deep and wide the love of Christ is. Many modern re readers might, of the gospel might be content to do the same. We assume that death is death also and that our proper response should be to enshrine the dead Jesus in a tomb of memory. This is not a tomb of memory here in this church. This is a place for life. When you look around you, you should see life. You might recall Jesus as an insightful teacher, as a fiery prophet, as a compassionate healer, but he died. And so we imagine ourselves called to hallow his memory with praise for his legacy. Much as the women imagine themselves called to honor the dead with spices and ointments, that's not enough. Jesus comes that we may have life and have it to the fullest. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen. We might be tempted to linger over Jesus' death, but it's important that we come now from death into life, into resurrection. Not just waiting for resurrection in the next life, which we believe and we know will come, but also looking for life here and now. Jesus is risen. They don't see the risen Jesus in Luke's gospel. What they have is a word, a message. That's all we have today, brothers and sisters. I have no proof to give you. There's nothing hiding here that I can show you to prove that Jesus is dead. But I can tell you in my heart that Jesus is alive, excuse me, or that he died. But I can tell you in my heart that he lives. The Easter experience, time and time and again, draws me closer to that truth, closer to that belief. 
Unbelief doesn't mean that people believe nothing. Rather, it means that they believe in something else. Everybody believes something, right? Everybody believes something. Why not believe today in this Easter message and allow it to begin to work, even in our uncertainties? How can we be sure that death is not final? What do you think happens when we die? My friend asked. This Easter message, it calls us forward. It invites us into this community as we stand with Peter in amazement. But the Easter story continues far beyond that as God continues to challenge the certainty of death with the promise of life. Go ahead and tell God that you think it's outrageous to expect anyone to believe that Jesus is risen. Go ahead. He welcomes that. Go ahead and tell God that you believe that death does get the final word. None of this is news to God. He has heard it all before. He simply refuses to believe it. Why do you seek the living among the dead, God wonders? Through the living Jesus, I give you the gift of life. Why would you think that I would offer you anything less? What happens after you die? I answered that question with this. What do you hope will happen? And that is where our faith comes into play. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. What do you hope will happen? Put your faith there. Not only an invitation to wait for death, but because Jesus has already cheated death and he reigns victoriously. We come now into this community of faith, this community that invites you to ask, to wonder, to walk together. You are not alone in your wonderings. You are not alone in your questions. You are not alone in your doubt. And this place of life is the very place that God calls you to be today. It's in this community that we have the privilege of welcoming new members today. This community in faith that invites us not to know all the answers, but invites us to walk together in our doubts and our fears. It's this community that welcomes today Shelby and Trenton and Aubrey in Christian faith. I want to invite you, if you would, to turn over in your hymnals. page 38 as I invite Shelby and Trenton and Aubrey to come up. On page 38, we'll skip over there today. Shelby and Trenton are already members of Christ Universal Church, having confessed their belief in Jesus Christ and been baptized. And I ask them now that as members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal now to this United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? And friends, as members of this congregation, if you are a member here, a member of the household of God, I want to commend Shelby and Trenton to you now in your love and care. I want to ask that you will do all in your power to increase their faith, to let them walk with us, to confirm their hope, to perfect them in love. Would you respond now? We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ. And in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Friends, would you welcome Shelby and Trenton into our congregation? And when you tell them, testing. 
testing. One, two, one, two. Would you turn back with me to page 33? If you hadn't noticed this little bundle of joy in, that Shelby's holding, this is Shelby and Trenton's daughter. Shelby, what name is given to this child? Friends, Aubrey Lynn Trusty comes today by her mom and dad who desire to raise her in the congregation of the United Methodist Church. Shelby and Trenton, I ask on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. Would you say, I do? Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil and injustice and oppression in whatever form it presents itself? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And will you nurture Aubrey in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Will you, will you, her family, and you, her church family, will you support Aubrey and Trenton and Shelby and encourage them in their Christian life? And do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And will you nurture one another in Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together now in professing the Christian faith that's contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. When nothing but chaos existed, you swept across the dark waters and you brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land that you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. O oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit now to bless this gift of water and to bless Aubrey who receives it, to wash away her sin and to clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, that she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, 
through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Oh, goodness. Got the hairball off. Aubrey Lynn Trustee, I baptize you now in the name of God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merciful God, may your grace work now in the life of Aubrey and in her parents and her family, that she may grow in the grace and knowledge of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy she gives, but greater still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives. you turn back to page 12 what a wonderful response for us to come together to the table of grace today knowing that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and who seek to live in peace with one another therefore let us confess our sins before God and before one another merciful God we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart we have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us before... We had any answers, even in our doubt, even in our confusion. Christ died while we were yet sinners. And this proves God's love toward us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right that as we remember now the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we break together this bread that opens our eyes, that helps us to see helps us to remember the power of God in our lives. We remember that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, that he took bread at the Passover meal, that he gave it to his disciples, and he broke it and he gave thanks to God the Father. And he said, take this loaf. This is my body that is broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, Jesus took the cup, and he blessed it, and he gave thanks to God the Father, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink from this cup. This is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
as often as you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves now in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union in Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here and on these gifts of bread and vine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ Jesus that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Friends, Christ was whole, but he became broken so that you and I might be made whole. Christ was full, but he emptied himself on the cross so that you and I might be made full. If you would take your elements today in the giving of the bread and the cup, And if you're joining us online in this liturgy of Sacrament of Holy Communion, I invite you to get your elements now. The body of Christ that is given for you. The blood of Christ that was shed for you. Thanks be to God. Would you respond now in prayer? Gracious God, your anointed one on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood. Mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life. Amen. You ask me how I know. The answer is I don't. <laughs> it doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you try to explain it. But I know because he lives within my heart. May it be so for you today in the name of our beloved Christ. Would you stand and praise God together, singing our closing hymn of invitation, He Lives. Number 310.